Welcome back to Hannity. There are new developments regarding the embattled IRS. Now, earlier today, a second agency employee, Gregory Roseman, invoked the Fifth Amendment, refusing to answer questions during a House Oversight Committee hearing. Let's take a look. Mr. Chairman, on the advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer any questions and invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege to remain silent. Mr. Roseman, are you currently employed by the IRS? Mr. Chairman, on the advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer any questions and invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege to remain yes. silent. Now, flashback to Lois Lerner, who did the same thing, but Roseman was being questioned about a whole different issue. Now, that is helping a friend secure $500 million worth of IRS contracts. Now, this news comes less than 48 hours before the same committee will vote on whether they think that Lerner waived her constitutional protections before invoking her Fifth Amendment rights back in May. Also tonight, we must correct the record, because despite what liberals are now suggesting, these new claims by progressive groups that they were targeted by the IRS are are in fact false. Now, if you've been paying attention to the scandal, you know that the Inspector General report outlined very clearly the distinct ideological imbalance. Now, the uh, ousted IRS commissioner admitted to targeting conservatives, and if progressives were indeed unfairly treated, why did anyone say so earlier? Here with reaction on all things IRS, syndicated author, columnist, Fox News contributor Michelle Malkin. Um, well, we got number two, Fifth Amendment. Reaction. Yeah, well, all it takes is one crack for a stone wall to crumble. And as hard as these obstructionist IRS bureaucrats are working uh, to keep the truth from the public, it's uh, not going to work. It's, it's, it's not going to pan out for them. And uh, the pressing and the pressure that Daryl Issa and the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee are performing are only a, a piece of it. We need continued vigilance and continued voices um, from the American people, the American taxpayers, not just people who are persecuted and those who are sympathetic to him, but I think uh, to, to these groups, but also I think anyone with a sense of decency or fairness. And we need to get back to that, because a couple of months ago, before there were, were a lot of distractions, before there were a lot of lies from these progressives about what really happened, it seemed to me that there was a breakthrough in the American mainstream um, and a shared collective outrage on the part of the larger American public about this witch hunting that's been going on under the Obama administration. Yeah, we also have that in, in spite of the claim that these were rogue agents in Cincinnati, We've now identified 12 separate areas where, in fact, this was happening. Does that not suggest it was institutionalized? Of, of course. And all roads lead to Washington, D.C., and all fingers at some point will lead straight to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And the thing is that I know, and I'm going to address them directly because I know that they're out there, uh, that there are many rank and file IRS agents, people who've worked in enforcement, people who have worked and put years and years and decades uh, into trying to do a good job. It has to be done by somebody. Uh, people who have that sense of fairness that I talked about, uh, who still may be very fearful about uh, blowing the whistle, but are this close. And I would urge them to continue to come forward and seek out many of these uh, nonprofit legal organizations that are providing protection, safe harbors, and representation for them to come forward and blow the whistle. What did you make? We also have the, the, this money spending scandal, the Star Trek, yeah. the dancing. Well, now we've got apparently money spent on wine, porn, baby clothes, diet pills. It yeah. sounds like a good gig and $70 million, million dollars in bonuses. Yeah. When it rains, it pours. And again, I think the sense of justice that there has to be within the organization, within the bowels, I know there are people who have witnessed so much of this fraud and so much of this political persecution and are disgusted with what their bosses are doing. Um, and I think that's, you know, the hidden story here, the story that will be told, will come out uh, about how many of these regional officers were forced forced, coerced, and ordered to do things that they absolutely abhor. Explain this, though, through the prism of what we learned this week. Seventy-six percent of Americans are living pay to, paycheck to paycheck. When you mm -hmm. see that spending through that prism, th does that make you mad? It makes me mad. It does. And I think this is why uh, those um, spin masters um, 
in D.C. and in Obama's house uh, really ought to be trembling right now, because if uh, the majority of Americans can understand the basic abuses of government that have been going on on their dime, it shakes the core of this whole progressive nanny state and the blind trust that so many have had in government. It goes beyond partisan lines. All right, Michelle Malkin, always good to see you. Thank you so much. You bet.